joining us now is Ojinika Ope, who is tourist trending around the world. Hello, Genex. Good morning, Dr. Abati. I love that. How is your Friday going? I want to be in your position one day. <laughs> joining us now is Dr. Ruben Abati with stories trending around the world. So you're going to have to have <laughs> nicknames. You've got to put a nickname in there. We have to look for yeah. it. Good morning, Tom. You morning. know today's my favorite day. I know. You're so excited on Fridays. Very. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Archie. Thank you. How are you, TGIF? Very exactly. Good. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, the Senate confirmed Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court on Thursday, shattering a historic barrier by securing her place as the first black female justice and giving President Joe Biden a bipartisan endorsement for his effort to diversify the court. The 51-year-old former appeals court judge has nine years of experience on the federal bench. She is a graduate of Harvard University and served as a public defender, Vice President Kamala Harris, who is also the first black woman to occupy that office, presided over the confirmation hearing. On this vote, the yeas are 53, the nays are 47, and this nomination is confirmed. In Turkey, a court has suspended the trial of 26 Saudi nationals accused of the gruesome killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi and sent the case back to Saudi Arabia. Khashoggi was a fierce critic of the Saudi regime and the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who was killed on October 2018 while visiting the consulate in Istanbul to retrieve papers to prove that he was divorced from his ex-wife in Saudi Arabia. In Nigeria, chairman of the Dangote Group, Alahaji Aliko Dangote, maintained his top position as Africa's richest man for the 11th consecutive time with a net worth of $14 billion on Forbes' 36th annual ranking of the planet's richest people, while chairman of Globalcom, Micah Denuga comes in as the second richest Nigerian with a net worth of $7.3 billion. Under sports, five-time Masters champion Tiger Woods made a stunning comeback after he shot a one under par 71 at the Masters on Thursday as he returned to competitive golf in what he described as an electric atmosphere at Augusta. The 46-year-old who suffered life-threatening injuries in a car crash last year confirmed on Tuesday that he planned to play at the Masters. Finally, under entertainment, singer, songwriter and actress Ashanti cemented her musical legacy with her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on Thursday. The 41-year-old Billboard Music Award winner was fettered for her amazing career, which includes multiple music awards, as well as her roles in television and film. Well, let's begin what's trending. Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoinka was trending on Thursday after he expressed enthusiasm to be involved in legal proceedings to unravel killers of a former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Chief Bola Ige, while the playwright, who was speaking at a media briefing in Lagos titled, Forget the Past, Forfeit the Future, a Nation Seceding from Humanity, reiterated a position he held over the weekend, indicating that a person that is implicated in a certain crime should not aspire for a certain kind of office, making reference to Iola Omishore, the new National Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, who was arraigned alongside 10 others in 2002 for the murder of Chief Bola Ige, but was later acquitted. To we'll just say that once you have been involved in certain forms of activity, such as lead eventually to the extinction of a good man who should not be seen in certain positions in society. Ibuhari and the APC leadership want to reward somebody like Omishori. He's giving an embassy somewhere, maybe in Ukraine. Send him there as ambassador. But don't make him the National Secretary of a ruling party. 
see, that's where we're concerned. Dr. Bhatti, I heard you giggle when they said send him there as an ambassador. But you know I was saying earlier that if someone has been acquitted of a crime, it's been acquitted of a crime, I mean, why should they continue to hold that type of, um, you know, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I think them? this should be put in know. context. On Saturday, uh, Nobel laureate uh, Professor Ole Shuinka uh, uh, released a statement. Perhaps close files should remain just that, closed. Mm -hmm. And it was... Right. Uh, uh, reacting to uh, the fact that uh, the emergence of uh, Senator Yellow Mishuri as the National Secretary of the All Progressive Congress is something that offends, in his view, uh, the sensitivity of the people, the sensibilities of the people. And it was raising a moral question that in 2001, December, uh, you know, 31st, I think, 2001, when Chief Bolaige, then Minister of Justice, uh, was uh, assassinated in his Bodija home in Ibadan, or your state, uh, there were insinuations that the uh, incident could be traced all the way back to a previous encounter with uh, Yolo Mishuri in, in Ife, at the palace of the then Oni of Ife, when Yolo Mishuri was said to have removed the uh, chief's cap and then uh, Thrown it to uh, and, and he threw it to uh, you know thugs and there was some altercation, some tension in the palace. And it wasn't long after that uh, that Chief Bolaige was assassinated. At the time, uh, Professor Wale Shinka had written a piece uh, dancing on uh, Bolaige's grave because Yolo Mishuri was arrested along with ten others. Okay, uh, one of them I've forgotten his name now was a student of uh, Obafemi Awolowo University. That was in 2002. But you believe that Senator Yaolo Mishuri won election as a senator of the Federal po po uh, Republic from uh, detention in the course of, of that case. And eventually, he was discharged and acquitted by uh, the court of law, a court of competent jurisdiction. So when uh, Professor Ashwinka raised an objection, which could be a moral objection to his emergence as the National Secretary of the ruling party of Nigeria. Uh, Iola Mishuri responded. His lawyers also responded. Yes, they did. He said, look, he had been discharged and acquitted. Like, okay, he respects uh, Professor Shuinka in terms of his intellect and accomplishments, but that uh, no individual can be bigger than the judiciary of Nigeria. And if he's been discharged and acquitted, that matter is closed. To ask him to be tried a second time will amount to a double jeopardy, double jeopardy. as lawyers uh, will put it. But then uh, Professor Inka did not allow the matter to stay there. So that was why he gave another press conference about forgetting the past and playing with the future and humanism receding in Nigeria. And he said, well, if Yola Mishore wants to go to court, he's uh, ready to uh, meet him in court because he's making a statement about morality about humanism, that to decap a man a man could, could lead to decapitation, as happened in the specific case of uh, Chief Bolaige. And I could be given anything, but to be made a principal officer in the, uh, in the uh, ruling party would seem to be uh, some kind of assault on the public uh, side. So that's uh, Professor Walesho Inka's opinion in this matter. And he has the support of Femi Falano, SCN, who also said that, look, uh, there is no statute of limitation on murder cases, and that all cases of unresolved murders uh, during that period, uh, you know, should be uh, revisited. And indeed, at that time, there were so many cases, Mashalari, you know, and so many other prominent figures. And throughout that time, no murder was resolved. And the most scandalous case was that of the Minister of Justice, uh, Chief uh, Bolaige. And you know, of course, that. Uh, Professor Wole Shuinka has a personal relationship with uh, Chief Bolaige. They were very good friends, you know, associated uh, by the fact that they're both, uh, they were both alumni of uh, University College Ibadan and also lifelong uh, friends. So this is uh, Professor Wole Shuinka trying to remind the public of what went wrong. And Femi Falano says, if Professor Shuinka wants to go to court, he will go to court with him and offer his services pro bono. You know, that, that means free of charge. So these are the issues. So certain things that had happened in the past don't go away. Mm -hmm. And you can understand where 
Professor Wally Shenka is coming from. But okay, if Professor Shenka hopes uh, that there will be a retrial, or that any court of law will declare a mistrial, and that the trial should start de novo, I don't think that's going to happen. But he has achieved the objective of raising certain critical points about the character you know, of persons who may have been you know, called out in the past and how far they can go in society. But the truth of the matter is that Senator Yola Omishore has not been convicted that by any court of, of competent jurisdiction. So Two. people can have their personal opinions, but if you are not a convict, if you have not been so declared, the man even went on to become a senator. He went on to uh, run for election in Ocean State. Yeah, he is now national secretary of the ruling party. Don't be surprised if tomorrow Senator Yale Michel declares for the presidency of Nigeria. Now that uh, the presidency has become an all commerce uh, affair. Yes. So this is the truth about our country. Sure. What do you make of the situation? Well, yes, there's the legal issue and then there's the moral issue. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that Senator Omishere responded to Professor Wale Shrenka. It's important that he does. And it's important that he must realize deep down, even though he has never been found to have had any part in the murder of our own Kikero in this country, not Cicero. Don't you hate when people say Cicero? Kikero. Yes, there's no soft C in Latin. It's Kikero. Anyway, who also met a K similar Kikero end? lost his tongue. Yes. He, no, he was decapitated. Then yes. his tongue was poked by yeah. Mark Anthony's wife yes. and his head and his hands were displayed. Right. Yes. <laughs> so he also met a similar end. This is the, the, the kind of greatness yeah. of these men, which is why I also do not blame somebody like Professor Wale Shoenka for continuing to remind people of the gravity of that loss to this country. A man like that should never have been murdered. And not just not just um, Chief Bola Ige, I have to say, Justice Atinuke Ige passed on just over a year after her husband's death. Yes. And we all really believe it's because she died of a broken heart and the injustice that was meted on her husband. So it cannot be swept under the carpet. And any time it is raised by people like Professor Wale Shrenka, Senator Iyola Mishere should respond. And he has responded. I'm sure he knows deep down what he did or what he is reported to have done or been involved in was what you said, the removal of um, the Chief Bola Ige's cap. But he did not actually um, was not actually convicted of shooting him. But unfortunately in law, we call it a chain of causation. It just might be that because of that removal of cap, breaking of his glasses, who was manhandled, Chief Bolaige at the Onis Palace, it created an environment such that people who had dark intentions took advantage of that and then pinned the blame on Senator Omishere. There's that theory that's posited. So that it's not actually Senator Omishere. He just had his own issue with Chief Bolaige and some other dark force came in and took advantage of it. But the fact is, because of the gravity of that loss, it's a question that will always be raised. And I think Chief Bolaige deserves for that question to continually to be raised because he was a great Nigerian and he should not have perished the way that he did. Yeah. And I also commend Professor Wale Shenka for his loyalty because loyalty, it transcends death. We always have to honor those we have lost. And the unfairness that was done, not just to Chief Bolaige at that time, like you said, there was also um, uh, Marshall Harry, there was also Dickie Bo, there was Barnabas Igwe and his wife, there was Funcha Williams, so many killings that have never been resolved in this country. Right. We'll take another story. Peter Obi, presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, has called on Nigerians to shift their attention from wealth sharers to wealth creators and to interrogate their favorite presidential candidates. While well, the former governor of Anambra State, who made the call while meeting stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party, including the National Assembly Caucus, also said that he was not desperate to become the next president of Nigeria, but is desperate for a better Nigeria. It is not about somebody who is going to come next to be the president and answer Mr. President for somebody who, who will start creating wealth and making the country productive from day one. We are not looking for those who will share what we have. We want wealth creators. And I'm asking as a party, let us go and look at background. Where are they coming from? What have they been able to do in the past 30 years to create wealth? Well, Rafai, your turn. So this many things. Real quickly, Peter will be. Yeah. I think Nigerians should go out there and listen to their candidates or the aspirants as it is now. We don't have candidates yet. The aspirants. And listen to the strength of their argument and their ideas. He said a lot there yes. yesterday. And it's worth listening. And you know the shocking thing about politics in Nigeria is we have 
we, we are so busy making permutations about who spends the largest amount of money when we don't listen to the candidates or the aspirants, I should say. So he's worth listening to. People have been sharing this message. You should listen to him. You should listen to other aspirants too and see who makes the best argument and match it up with the antecedents. Not people that tell you lies. They say they'll build heaven, but they can't fix the problem of unemployment in their states. <laughs> Not people that so tell you lies. State. And they have, you know, un- you know what it means for unemployment in your state to be over 40%. And, and they say they are the best and the brightest. I want to talk about, you know, the Bolaegi case particularly hurt me so deep. 23rd of December 2001 is a day I will never forget. Me too. Because it's a day that justice died in Nigeria. We forget in a hurry that he was the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice in this country, and he never got justice. And everybody moves on like nothing happened. We remember that that was the case that brought Festus Kiamu to National Limelight. We remember Frayo was the name of the person we're trying to Who remember. Took his that. Cap off. Yeah, yes, it was Frayo. You're trying to remember. And what? we forget all that happened around to the sage of SLK. But the most important matter there is the fact that we had a Nigerian state that couldn't give justice to the Attorney General of the Federation. So if the Minister of Justice couldn't get justice, then do we have a state? Today we're interviewing some people that talked about how they are your family members and the hands of kidnappers and you know terrorists. But we forget that this thing did not start today. It started way back in 2001, where the Minister of Justice couldn't get justice. Yeah, the court has acquitted the Yola Mishore, who's gone on to do all that great things. So we won't forget that it was a beautiful bride during an election. Mm, the actual election. The actual election. Yeah. And he used to navigate his way out. But with the subtext of this, what we should never forget, that if somebody as highly placed as the Minister of Justice couldn't get justice in this country, then there's no justice. Well said. We shall take our final story. Many Nigerians have shared mixed reactions to the bill proposed by a member of the House of Representatives seeking to prohibit cross-dressing. But the proposed legislation, which seeks to amend the same-sex Marriage Prohibition Act 2013 was sponsored by Muda Lawal, a lawmaker from Bauchi State. While the bill defines cross-dressing to mean the practice of wearing clothes, usually worn by a person of the opposite sex, and stipulates that a person engaged in cross-dressing is guilty of an offense and liable to imprisonment for up to six months or a fine of 500,000 naira. Well, this implies that if the bill passed into law, Popular cross-dressers like Bob Risky, whose real name is Idris Okuneye, and James Brown, both Nigerian cross-dressers, may face up to six months in jail if caught in the act. Bob Risky has taken to Twitter to respond to this bill. She wrote, or he wrote, the good thing about this bill is that one, it will finally solve Nigeria's insecurity challenges. Two, improve power supply. Three, end ASU strike. Four, Repair the negative impression foreigners have about Nigeria. Five, cause the reduction of prices of items in the market. Well, be fast, please. Bob Risky is waiting, Dr. Vati. Okay, you have Bob Risky out there. You have James Brown there, mm. who is currently in the UK, uh, trying to uh, get some education. Wow. And then the name of, uh, uh, the name of uh, Denrile Edu. Denrile, has yes. also been uh, included. Yeah. Now, this particular lawmaker, Uma Muda Lawa, uh, from Bauchi State, has now proposed uh, this particular bill. I've had persons raising the question whether this should be a priority uh, at this time, considering the fact that it's from uh, a part of the country where there are more urgent uh, issues. But you really cannot dictate to a lawmaker what it brings to the table in terms of uh, proposal. The second thing is a cynical response by uh, Bob Risky. Uh, because when he says, oh, it will solve the uh, insecurity problem in Nigeria, <laughs> it will bring uh, investors to Nigeria, uh, then, of course, you know that it's just been cheeky. Yeah. But it's not the first time that Bobriski will be challenged. Uh, before now, you know, there have been persons who have uh, uh, challenged him. I know that uh, uh, Mr. Nushewe, you know, the uh, tourism, uh, uh, cultural and arts uh, sector, at, at one occasion said, in fact, Bobriski should be arrested. 
However, what should be noted is that this uh, uh, proposal, this bill by Honorable Mudalawa may be supernumerarious to the extent that there is a same-sex prohibition act of 2013, which already prohibits any kind of behavior that looks like uh, you are gay or you are, you know, trying to uh, show amorous affection, you know, one man to the other in the public. The punishment in the same-sex prohibition act of uh, uh, 2013 is uh, 14 years. Yes, it is. You know, and uh, yeah, section one of that uh, particular act defines uh, union as a union between a man and a woman. A man is not allowed to go and go to go about Nigeria dressing like a woman. The law is there. Okay. There's also section 214 of the criminal code. Section 214 of the criminal code uh, prescribes a punishment of seven years. And then accomplices, people who admire these uh, cross-dressers, uh, they are liable to oh, 10 years imprisonment. <laughs> People who run uh, uh, gay clubs, restaurants, or who organize events that suggest any kind of gay behavior, you know, they are also liable to 10 years imprisonment. Yeah. The problem, however, in Nigeria is the fact that, look, the international community turned against the Jonathan government under which that particular piece of legislation was passed. It was part of my job, you know, to defend the Nigerian position and to ask that this was the position taken by the representatives of uh, Nigeria. But that law uh, has not has been observed more in the British. No, but can I say that cross-dressing does not mean you're gay. You can be straight. Well, yeah, the I, indication, I, I, if you give the impression, if you give the impression. It doesn't apply to people that are in the film. So, so, yeah, so Tyler Perry and Medea, yeah. yeah. you know, he's doing it. Both the same sex. I know there's an exception. Both the same sex. Uh, Prohibition Act and Section 214. They, they, they say if you give the impression that you are different from the rest of uh, the community, <laughs> then you are liable. Okay? Well, you can, right, you can be a cross dresser and be in a heterosexual relationship. Uh, well, that, that's <laughs> not his point.